Bill Farley, you must, do you love to cook or something? I love this show. Okay. I just love this oh, show. I, you're at every cooking show. I, go, I Bill, know. You must cook a lot. Cook a lot. <laughs> okay. It's summertime, you know. Summertime. And there's no better time to throw a party. I know you guys, you and Shelly have parties all the time. Uh, whether you prefer a casual garden party, a backyard beach bash, or the ultimate gourmet picnic, we have some great ideas for summer entertaining to help you host a great summer party without losing your cool, okay? And we mean more than just some weenies on a stick, okay? <laughs> First, take a look at these adorable mini watermelons. Aren't these just the cutest? Aren't they just really cute? Okay. So these are the rage. Uh, we love them because they fit perfectly into your picnic basket or your beach bag, and they're ultra, they're ultra sweet. I mean, they're like scarlet inside, no seeds. These pint-sized melons are perfectly round, they're seedless, and they weigh from three to six pounds. You can lift weights with them <laughs> and then eat them. They're not genetically engineered at all, but a cross between two breeds of watermelon. So you can get them in the stores now. Pure Hearts aren't the only mini melons. These are called Pure Hearts, but there aren't the only mini mel melons making headlines. There's also the Bambino melon, which is a little bigger and the perfect size for two people to share. But these are, you, this is a watermelon for one. <laughs> I'm so excited about these melons <laughs> that I wanted each of you to have one. are the thing to have. <laughs> and they're in very high demand. But I asked the people at Pure Heart and Bambito, they are going to let you guys take home a melon apiece. <laughs> you get your own melon. Okay. Lifestyle expert Katie Brown is back. Come on up here, Katie. Hey, Katie Brown! <laughs> Uptown, downtown. Are things cute? I know, so am I. They're so cute, I can't I, stand them. They are really cute, and they're good for decorating, too. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, don't eat them. Use oh, them no, on your they're table. They're so delicious. You I've, wanna eat them. I've had two you already. Have you okay. really? Okay, that's a good morning. That's a good not, morning. Not in one day, but I, you know, I've been buying them. Okay. <laughs> She's author of the book, Katie Brown Entertains. Katie has some ideas for a casual garden party that will be affordable and stress-free. We like affordable, and stress-free. And stress-free. Okay. Well, so you don't lose your marbles or no. your melons or your, melon. your party. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay, shall we? Shall oh, we? Shall oh, I show this, you what we've done here? This looks a little stress-like to me. Okay, that's the thing. <laughs> that's the good thing, because it looks stress-like, but the yeah. truth is, stress-free. Let How me explain. So? Okay. How so? These are all different fabrics. You can even use old drapery. You can get your fabric from, like, sell-off. And all we did was take them and literally wrap them around the table, tie them at the bottom. That's all you got to do. It's a little tie right here. Are you seeing this tie? Can you see uh -huh. this? Yeah, yeah, see Okay, that. that's it. Oh, okay, okay. I got that. All right, okay. that's our first that's step, just, uh... which already makes it look so dramatic. Okay, that's because good. Because I think you want to think when you're setting a party, it's like you're making a stage. You're setting theater up. It's like great things are gonna happen. You want that moment where your guests come in and they go, oh, like that moment? That's right. Right? We love oh, that you've moment. been so stressed yeah. for me. <laughs> Thank you. Now, okay. okay, all we've done is taken simple napkins, tied a little mm -hmm. ribbon all the way through to kind of dress them up a bit. You oh, good with that? You got some neat. time to kinda do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good. Picture frames. <laughs> yes, Phil, I know what you... In inexpensive picture frames that we've taken. Oh, this is good. Oh, you like this. Okay, this I'm good. so happy. Is this like a... Uh, this becomes your... Uh... It's very Mondrian. It's very... Uh, I know, whatever. This is right. so Mondrian. It's so Mondrian to go with your melons, your yeah. eyebrow melons. And you just take ribbon and you decorate. And we did each one a little bit different so everybody feels a little special. That's very nice. Okay. Now, I can't say that I came up with this idea, but I can tell you I will steal it. Okay, what is it? Because it's genius. What is it? It's a fan that has a name up here, a perfect event, who evidently does a lot of parties yes, for you. Yes, for me, yeah. Did this. That Isn't is that a cute idea. Isn't that good with a menu okay. on that? Oh, the menu. Do you see that? That's everything we're having later, after the show, okay. when we go to eat. Ham with garlic Love. and rosemary. I know, so special. Buttermilk biscuits with cheddar cheese. Fresh mm -hmm. peas with mmm uh -huh. cream. Because We're it's all about your selling house. your menu. You have to make it sound That's maybe nice. better. Even if you're doing macaroni and cheese, you make it sound like pasta. This is That's a good it. idea. Good, good idea. idea. Good okay. idea. Now, on the back of the chairs, we just took simple table runners, yep. tied bows around here, 
and then took some bath salts, which I have right here. And to make these bath salts, all you have to do is get, you know how you got those big jugs of Epsom uh -huh, salt for uh -huh. about $5? Uh -huh. Add a dollop of um, aromatherapy to it, oil, mm -hmm. and some fresh herbs. Toss it all up like a big salad. And for all of these, it cost me about $6. Well, okay. Now that's good. Now that's good, that's right? That's good. That is good. And it's easy. Okay, and it's stress free. Okay. Okay. Now, why am I doing that? Though, why am I because sticking that in there? Because that's a favor that your guests get to take home. Oh, of course. They get a little something, something. Of course. Now, okay. okay I know what you're saying. You're thinking, "Wow, Katie, don't even start." Yeah. Okay, but, but all it is, and where do we have it? We have. I thought I had a little. It's two styrofoam wreaths. Two that styrofoam. You use a little spray adhesive and some hot glue. Tie some. Put some inexpensive moss and greenery around it. Pop in some flowers. And then drape some ribbon so it seems kind of like May Day and, and, and really That's pretty. Festive. Okay. That's pretty. She's stressed, but wait, okay, no. let's go to our Zen table. She's scared. Yeah. I'm scaring Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, that's, okay. that's not good. Okay, this is this is rocks. It's a lot of rocks. Yes. Very zen. <laughs> Very. I don't think she's with me, you guys. Oh, uh, no, okay. not on the rocks. Okay. I'm not with you on the rocks. I was with, with you on the ribbons. You got, I don't know about the rocks. You don't like rocks. the zen, like, okay, this is just regular slates, like paving slates, and you just take a little piece of chalk, write someone's name on it. We just printed these menus up mm -hmm. on a computer. And then if you can't afford a lot for flowers, all you have to do is get varying sizes, vases, even those old vases now, that you have. this is good. Bring this them out, good. put some rocks in the bottom, float some candles, and then just pop in a few flower heads here and there, and then it doesn't take quite as much money. OK. OK? I know, but if this was my house, people would say, why do you have all these rocks why on the table? <laughs> It's not at your house. This is something oh, you're going to do in your backyard. Okay, you're going to do in your right. backyard. You're okay. outdoors. Okay. And then you hang, again, something kind of dramatic from the top. Yes. Or not, if you no, don't want this to. Is, this, this is the thing, though. You're telling me that that is go Do you expect me to make that? Uh, yeah, I do. I do. With the help of Jesus, okay. who did a fantastic okay. job. It's just two styrofoam wreaths. You get at any craft store for about $2. Yeah. Get spray adhesive, that stuff that you spray all over it. Put your moss, put your eucalyptus up there, tie them together, and I'm telling you, your guest, you'll get that ta-da moment. Okay. You will. Oh, well, I'm sure I'm getting it. I just, <laughs> I mean, when I see this, hey, Suze, hey, Suze, who did this? Hi, hey, Suze. Now, how long did it honestly take you to do this? Tell the truth. Yeah, that's all we want is the truth. It took you 40 minutes to do this. Mm -hmm. do, you do this for a living, do you not? <laughs> it's very nice, very nice. Okay, I'm okay, just thinking. Okay, but here's the thing. Even if you see these tabletops and you think, okay, that's too much work for me, take this idea or take yeah. the slate idea. Pick one or two things that you love, <laughs> whether it's making the aromatherapy, little favors, and put those on, or yeah. just the placemat. I place do like mask. this. And if you're going to do this, people, get all your rocks in the same color. Do not <laughs> just go out to the driveway and pick up whatever's there. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can buy giant bags of landscaping rocks oh, okay, at like okay. garden supply stores okay. and things like that. And even all I'm trying to get people to do is when it comes to your parties this summer, kind of think outside of the box. What's something different I can do? Is I it like about this. rocks on the table? Is it about giant flowers? What can I do that'll make my summer party a little bit more fun and yeah, a little bit more festive? Yeah, we did a festive. summer party with you, I think, where you did sand. We did, the sand down the and tabletop. And some sticks. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm That's always right. blowing her that mind. That sand and That's some sticks. That's my job. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now for a refreshing treat to top off any summer garden party: frozen sorbet served in hollowed-out fruit called bindi fruity rapini. Is that what it's called? Bindi fruity rapini. Bindi fruity rapini. <laughs> but they're so cute. Okay. Bindi fruity rapini is a little slice of summer. And guess this: they are they're fat-free. Oh, that's good. They they are divine Love dessert. That. They come in lemon. <laughs> Lemon, peach, orange, pineapple, and coconut. They're also good. Uh, I remember seeing these. And they're uh, so cute. Yeah. And, this and stress free, because you just have to call and they deliver them. OK, so we've got we like that. each bindi uh, for everybody. Everybody has a bindi. Come on out with it. Mm. Oh, that's right. Isn't that good? That is good. Y'all are going to like it. How can this be fat free? I don't Thank, understand. I don't know. Thanks to the folks at mm. Bindi. Uh, Katie Brown, thank you. You too, thank you. Mm -hmm. Coming up, top fashion designer Cynthia Riley shows us how to throw a beach bash in your backyard. As we go to break, here's a look at a garden party that I hosted. Take a look. I held the party at the home of my neighbor, Genevieve, whose magnificent garden was in full bloom. 
My house was being worked on, so couldn't get in mine. And I asked everybody to wear their favorite hat. Genevieve and her daughter Catherine helped me greet my guests. My longtime friend Maria Schreiber, my best friend Gail, and some of my senior staffers from the show. Even my dog Sophie got in on the fun. I made sure the table was in a shady spot. The dragonfly place cards and rose napkin rings were part of the garden theme, which I carried through to the chairs wrapped in organza and pinned with a bouquet of fresh flowers and refreshing lavender lemonade. For my ladies who lunch, I served a sautéed shrimp salad, stuffed chicken breast, and we were all dazzled by dessert because these beautiful flower pots were actually chocolate cakes. Everything was edible right down to the dirt made of crushed cookies. By the end of the party, we kicked off our shoes and everybody went home with special mementos to remember that day. A hat box filled with goodies, a silver tea set, a mini cake shaped like a hat, and lots of fun memories. I'll talk to you. Okay. Phil's my neighbor. I'm trying to figure out every cooking show he's here. Is he? he I, I heard he has a lot of money. Are you looking for free food? What is it? <laughs> you know, Art's an old friend. Art's oh, an old Art's friend. an old friend. Oh, you and Art were, yes, I know. He used to well, cook for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Today, we're giving you some ideas to make your summer party a splash. Fashion designer Cynthia Raleigh has a flair for whimsical and fun touches. And she says when it comes to summer entertaining, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Here's a look at how Cynthia put together a backyard beach bash at her home in the Hamptons. Hey, Oprah. Cynthia Raleigh here. We're here at my little Hampton surf shack, where tonight we're throwing a little beach tailgate party. And I'm here to show everyone how I like to entertain in the summer. Casual, easy, relaxed, just kind of throw it together. I live right near the surfer beach, so all day long people stop by. So I have to be ready to entertain every day. I love it, it's fun. So today, I just wanted to have something easy. I have a party closet that I just keep putting things in, like fun tablecloths and napkins and lanterns and vases, and so everything's ready to go. Well, it doesn't have to be a closet. It could be a drawer or a little storage bin or whatever, but it's just important to have a place where you can stash all this stuff because you never know when party people might just pop by. These are just kitchen cushions. They're perfect to sort of line up on your picnic bench here like this. Makes that hard wooden bench a little more comfy. In the summer, I think you should always think about color when you think about your theme. The more color, the better. Mix it all up. Mix stripes and prints and brights. I saved all these vintage tablecloths that I buy at garage sales for like 25 cents. Here I've mixed some vintage pieces in my own collection from Target. Everything kind of works together. I like to plan my parties around an activity. So today, I have croquet set up, which you know, you think that sounds a little stuffy, and we should all be speaking with a British accent, but it doesn't have to be. It can actually be quite competitive. Ow! <laughs> okay, so since this is a tailgate party, I'm gonna use the trunk of my 1965 red galaxy rag top as the bar. Okay, wait till you guys hear this. I think it's the best invention. They're called pop tails, cocktails that I mix up and put in these little um, popsicle molds, and then you freeze it, and it's cocktails on a stick. It's cold, and it's fruity, and it's delicious. For tonight's party, I have chicken kebabs with pineapple chunks and shrimp with some veggies here, and then the guests can just throw it on whenever they want, and it's part of the fun when you get to cook your own my house is so small that we have to do everything outside anyway. I like to set up little stations so that people can go in one area and then go to another area. The little bungalow, it's actually my garage turned into a guest room. I have the Airstream trailer, which is kind of fun and people can kind of go in there and chill out a little bit. You just want to create different places for your guests to go. So pitch a tent or throw up a hammock these $1.99 beach mats that you get at any drugstore. And this, my favorite little item, the Swell Round Beach Towel. So you can lay in the sun, and you don't have to ever turn your towel. <laughs> I think 
it's important to use things around the house. So I had this wheelbarrow, and I needed some place to put our little party favors. We have all these little iZone Polaroid cameras that people can take. When people leave the party, they have instant souvenirs and instant memories. OK, so I dressed the table. I dressed the house. I dressed the convertible. There was one other thing I was going to dress. It's me. You have to look good for your own parties. Now let's get this party started. Hey, Hello. You too. Hello. Hello. You. Ready for some cocktails? Oh, of let's course. Have a drink, please. <laughs> we got a little croquet over there. Outdoor ping pong. I always say it's not what's on the table, it's what's on the chairs. A good mix of people is really important. I like to just mix it up. Okay, Oprah, so as you can see, anybody can throw a party. It was really pretty easy, and everybody's having a good time, so I'll probably be doing this every weekend. Why don't you come over? Come over. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Cynthia Rowley. The Round Beach House. The round beach towels were designed by Cynthia for her swell line. They look like fun. And Cynthia sent along one for everyone in our audience. Furnishings and table settings on our set are from Crate and Barrel. Love this. Aren't these beautiful? Crate and Barrel. Coming up, love these plates. Look at these gorgeous orange. These are beautiful. So, doesn't that say summer? That says summer. Coming up, Charlie Trotter, one of the world's greatest chefs, shows us how to create the ultimate gourmet picnic. More summer party ideas when we come back. Thank you, Crate and Barrel. Okay, some great ways to add pizzazz to your picnic. Uh, Chef Charlie Trotter's restaurant in Chicago is considered one of the finest in the world. And he is here. Yeah. Being Charlie Trotter. And he is here. If you come to Chicago, it's a must. If you come to Chicago, it's a must to go to Charlie Trotter's. Now, he's here to show us how to make your next picnic an over-the-top dining experience. I tell ya. He even brought along what he calls the ultimate picnic basket. I just said, it looks like it's for very rich people, too. Well, it's, uh, it's special occasion kind of stuff, and sometimes you just have to celebrate in the right way and fill it with goodies and these special watermelons, and you're all set. So I, lo I love the Charlie, where do you find a basket like that? This particular basket, and we've got a number of different sizes and types that we use, but uh, this comes from England. Uh -huh. And it's filled with special crystal, and you could use your own silver if you want to, different plates. But for that occasion, when you really yeah. want to wow You know, I, I like giving uh, p picnic baskets, but they're about one quarter the size, uh -huh. uh, you know, for people as wedding gifts, because I think it's a wonderful thing to do, even if you're going to picnic on your living room floor to do. And filled up with goodies. Filled, uh, you have yeah. to fill it with goodies, otherwise they think you're cheap. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so you do that with, well, that's wonderful. What do you have in there? Well, we've got uh, some different little uh, special lemonades from France and several types of wine and Below, we've got a little cooler with caviar and some small little smoked oh, fish pieces. Yes. Mm -hmm. And now, these can either be filled with, uh, well, a cold beverage, a lemonade or something, or a special drink with a little more kick. So <laughs> it's up to you yeah, on that yeah, one. Yeah. Now, one of Charlie's uh, favorite picnic recipes for the summer is a gourmet prosciutto sandwich on grilled sourdough bread. Wouldn't Charlie just come up with that? OK, and he says it's simple to prepare. We'll see how simple it is. <laughs> and we'll wow your guests. OK, we're going to do that yeah, now? let's go ahead. OK, and... what do we call it? Gourmet. We go this way. Gourmet. Charlie Trotter cooks on the Oprah show. This is fab. Well, you know, it's like anything. If you get yourself organized and you have yourself yeah. ready, the stuff comes together very quickly. And we start by taking bread here. Uh -huh. This is a sourdough bread. And we just brush this with some uh, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, vinaigrette. We're going to take these pieces and just throw them right on the grill. So you actually grill the bread before Ooh. you uh, make the sandwich. And then Ooh, the heat Charlie. will allow us to melt that cheese. So 
Ooh. We'll get that going and uh -huh, uh -huh. throw these pieces right on the I'm grill. I'm just thrilled with the idea of it right now. That is so, okay. So it's real simple. <laughs> nice get grill those out there. It's a great grill. Mm -hmm. And we, you know, we can turn this into a smoker by just taking a handful of wet wood chips too. So that's uh -huh. a nice technique uh -huh. as well. So, so we're gonna grill the bread first with some olive oil, the uh, olive, is that olive oil and balsamic? It's an olive oil balsamic vinaigrette just to give it flavor. And uh -huh. once we've got the, the grill marks and we've got the flavor imparted, yeah. we're all set to go. And okay. take these and uh, here's how we make this sandwich. It's okay. really simple. Good. Put these down and... I love a good sandwich, don't you? You know, Charlie? it's hard, no matter what we do with gourmet food, it's hard to beat uh, a great sandwich, I okay. think. So this is prosciutto? This is prosciutto, mm -hmm. and just a little bit or there. Italian ham, for some people. <laughs> <laughs> That's so what it Italian is. Italian ham, okay. Well, you know, fancy name makes it a little better, I yeah. think. And what's that you're putting this on This is uh, provolone cheese, Okay. and we want to put that on just against the, uh, the meat, a little bit of watercress. I didn't eat lunch thinking about this, Charlie. Well, I heard you were here, and I said, is there food? I don't go anywhere without food, anywhere believe me. Anywhere without food, okay. So we take this, and then... And what was that green you put on this? This is watercress, any oh, kind of sharp lettuce. I love a watercress. Charlie. You're good with a knife, probably. Would you cut that? No, I'm not, Charlie. Uh, all right, well, it's pretty simple. <laughs> we, we, we take that and just cut it right in okay. half. And uh, so that's our prosciutto sandwich, and we can uh, try a little bit of that if you want to. You're not even going to hesitate, okay. Love. So, next we're going to take uh, pieces of pita bread here and brush these with a little bit of olive oil and throw these on the grill. Now, the sous chefs are normally supposed to keep on working here, so um, I'm going to. I'm gonna cut you a little slack, and I'm gonna go ahead and... We, kind of, we crisp these up a little bit, mm -hmm. and the idea is to make these uh, crisps, uh, these pita bread crisps, a regular pita, whole wheat pita, pita mm -hmm. and these become almost like, uh, like crackers for us. Mm -hmm. And we can use these to dip into a goat cheese mixture, which is very simple to make. We take mm -hmm. uh, uh, just goat cheese that we soften up and spoon out into a, a little plate, and then mm -hmm. we'll take a mixture of uh, olive and... You don't like that, do you? You're just being polite, I think. This could change my life. Okay. <laughs> this could. It's opened up a whole other prosciutto door for me. But Well, we're making sort of a vinaigrette. We're taking uh, olive and sun-dried tomato and basil. And that a is a great combination anyway, just by It's itself, beautiful. It? That mm -hmm. sort of just resplendent, uh, redolent Mediterranean <laughs> flavor. <laughs> And a little bit of seasoning, mm -hmm. and a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. Coarse sea salt is the best. Mm. And maybe, again, a touch of the balsamic. Mm -hmm. Or we could use wine, white wine, red wine. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to just spoon this right on top of our, our mixture of goat cheese here. So oh, really baby. simply, this becomes a, this dipping kind of uh, element for these pita pieces. <laughs> Now, just spoon it on. You're Very trying simple. to hurt me, Charlie. I'm, I'm trying to tempt you, actually. Yeah. So, I got two bites left. I'm that goes there. Mm -hmm. And then what we're able to do is just cut these like such. <laughs> Save that for later. And little kind of. And then we're going to cut this and dip this now. And too? this becomes like a, a sort of a dip almost. And it, but it's light. It's simple. It's healthy. It can be done in advance. Mm -hmm. So these pita. Chips. So this is goat were. cheese, this is olives, this is uh, sun dried tomatoes. Exactly. A little bit of olive oil. So these uh, become like the dipping vehicle into which we can kind of eat. You are this. speaking my language. Okay. Yeah. So very simple. Just use your fingers if you want. That's part of the okay. fun of food, especially outdoors in the summertime. Get your hands involved. Oh, oh we're outdoors. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm. Good. Mm. Well, we will be when we serve this. Oh. So here's our salad. And now. You've heard about... Oh, this is so good. It really is. Uh, people falling in love. No, really, I do not carry on about people's food, because, you know, from time to time, your food ain't so good on the show sometimes. <laughs> but that has happened with a couple people, and the dean, where you just have to say, well, let's move on to the next segment. <laughs> this is... I want to pass this around to the audience with a little... That is why your name is Charlie Trotter. Well, look, the other thing is, too, these what? days people want to eat 
very healthfully. They yeah. don't want to eat things where they're feeling heavy, especially when you're out in the sun and maybe running around. This is the perfect dish. You've probably been re hearing a lot about or reading a lot about this raw food yeah. revolution that's yeah. been going on. Yeah. And people have said, you know what, I want to take care of myself. I want to uh, sort of detox a little bit. I don't want to fast, but I'm going to eat raw. And the results are extraordinary. Here's a raw food preparation. Okay. We're going to take your raw food and we're going to leave it at room temperature. I'm going to I'm going to open up to the possibilities of raw, Charlie, okay. because it's you. I'm going to What ask is that you right to there? indulge me with this uh, uh it's it's a fennel and a uh, small tomato salad with mustard vinaigrette. <laughs> so the chips worked out. I can hear the crunch. Okay. Boy, oh, good. Really good. So too. spoon it on the plate yeah. and we finish with some vinaigrette here. And all this is is olive oil and mustard and fennel fronds and You know you want me to eat that too? Well, I want you to take a tiny bite. A tiny I can bite. give you a fork if you need one. And just... I can tell you now, with all due respect to you, it's not going to do for me what that just did for me. Okay. All right. I mean, I think it's pretty. It's pretty. I think it's pretty. Well... I think it's going to be a little crunchy thing going on. Yeah, it is. Texture is important. But it ain't no pita with the cheese. But no, okay. no. But it's a good change of pace. So. It's, 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 it's nice. It's not bad. <laughs> it's not bad. It's not but my sandwich. Yeah, you got really it. Good. Good. <laughs> People, the sandwich is happening, and everybody gets to taste the sandwich. <laughs> Peter Fitz from the Raw Salad and Charlie Bartolone. Put your prices for everybody. I love about Charlie's restaurant. It's a dining experience to go there, but now they have Charlie Trotters to go. So if you just need to pick up something for the evening and put a meal together, they have Charlie Trotters to go. And everybody's got picnic baskets, little picnic boxes from Charlie Trotters to go. You have the sandwich and everything. Coming up, gourmet grilling. Charlie Trotters cilantro and orange marinated chicken is next. I'm gonna finish my sandwich. Great. should see, I, I was watching you guys in the control room during commercial break. Y'all are chowing down on the sandwich. <laughs> the people are getting down, Charlie, on the, on the sandwich. World-renowned chef Charlie Trotter has a recipe that'll give kebabs a kick. It's cilantro and orange marinated chicken. This is good. You're gonna like this, people. Well, a lot of times people don't realize... Finish your sandwich so you can keep eating. That's good. With a little bit of a marinade, you can really introduce a lot of flavor. So we've taken the Ooh. chicken uh, breast meat pieces and cut them up into cubes. And then we... You're so organized. Are you always this organized? Me and my 25 helpers are okay. flawlessly organized. It works well. And yeah. we have pieces of uh, poblano chili and cilantro all over and a little bit of uh, orange juice. We can splash some of this on. And Why did uh, you say this coarse salt is the best salt? Well, Why? you know, when you get coarse sea salt, it's not processed with chemical and it's not dyed and it's... It's clean and it's pure. It's actually salt that has flavor. So, you, you know, you taste the beautiful flavor of the sea or the area. You know, when they talk about terroir with wine and you're tasting the region mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. dirt, the salts have all kinds of different, very complex flavors. They do? So, yeah, that's a really good one. Okay. So we're going to take these skewers and get them all marinated here, and we just put them right on the grill. Okay. And I like to grill over a slightly lower heat, because that way we don't char things. We get, you know, get that oh, flavor. You don't really... want them charred. Okay. I don't want to, you know, I want the marking, but I don't want it to be, sometimes people get the, the flame going too high. I think that's part of the frustration or the problem with grilling. You've got to control that heat. Maybe you have a hot spot over here if you want right. to get a little caramelization. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the shrimp are on. So you don't want to char it to burn out the flavor. No, no, I got no. that char. Or you get that burned edge to it. Okay. Santa Barbara spot prawns, oh. uh, little pieces of uh, tomato, and then we rub these with Santa this. Santa Barbara. Apricot curry sauce, which gives it this exotic flavor. And Apple. Okay, apricot, apricot curry okay. sauce. Oh, it's from Charlie Trotter. It's from Trotter's to go. We okay. have it over there. So we put these guys on and we just let them go. You know, the thing about Trotter's to go, there's so much to choose from. You can get, like, you, you go in, you're going to get, like, 
a pork chop and some mashed potatoes. You Hot end food, up with cold food. Yeah, you end up with so much because you're thinking, I think I'll try that. I think I'll try that. Small suckling pigs on the spit of the <laughs> live fire. It's a lot. It's right, a lot. Really. Yeah. Then, here's some fun. You don't think of grilling fruit. These are fruit kebabs. No, I don't think of that. And uh, what we want to do is take fruit. <laughs> that's why I'm me, and okay, you're you. That's um, right. <laughs> that's why we take, uh, we take the fruit, and we, we use firmer things, strawberries and melon and apricot and a few berries. And got to be careful here, because the, the natural sweetness will cause a little bit of a caramelization. So okay. we don't want to, again, low, delicate heat. But it caramelizes on the fruit. And when we're done, we really get some great things going. So. Okay. Okay, mini chicken kebabs, mini chicken kebabs for everybody. Come on out with those kebabs. It's a delight to work with you in the kitchen here. Well, Thank you great. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Charlie's uh, cookbook is called Charlie Trotter Cooks at Home. Charlie Trotter Cooks at Home. Coming up, we're whipping up a refreshing summertime drink with watermelon. One of my faves. Watermelon martinis coming up. We're on TV now. Okay, the hot new trend for a cool summer drink is uh, one of my new favorites. It really is. Uh, it's a watermelon martini. I was hiking with a friend uh, last summer who said to me, you know, I always serve my guests watermelon martinis. And I said, what is that? And then after we finished the hike, she sent over a basket with a little wa uh, shaker, a martini shaker, and a picture of watermelon martinis. That was my neighbor, Julie. That's a nice neighbor. <laughs> so, okay, then this is how you make them, Art. This is how you do it. How are you doing today? I'm doing great today. Good today. This is how Julie makes them. There's all kinds of different ways you can make them. <clears throat> you just sort of poke the watermelon, and then you mm. pour vodka into the watermelon, mm. and you let it seep down into the watermelon. And then once that goes down into the watermelon, hello, you pour a little more. <laughs> okay, and then that seeps down the watermelon, and you pour a little more. Mm. Mm. Okay, that's it. Good. That's good watermelon. That's good. Now you let that have sit. A big yeah, here. Got a big <laughs> then you let that sit in the refrigerator for as long as you so desire to chill, and then you scoop it out, and then you put it into your blender, the yeah. watermelon. Yeah, was... Hey! There's <laughs> none in it. Yeah. Okay. Good. And then you put that in your blender, and then add a little, just a dash, just a dash of Cointreau. A da dash. That's it. That's it. You know what dash is? Choop, the dash. Okay, as so long as you, it takes to say dash, that's a dash. Mm -hmm. And then you hit the blender. Yep. Oh. Magic. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank you, audience. <laughs> You're such supportive friends. <laughs> Thank you. And then, what? What do you do then? We can just pour it into our glass there. Yes. I add the mint. Add the mint. What do you mm -hmm. add the mint? I, I like that you can add the mint into the glass like that. I like that. the mint in the glass. Like that? Yes. And if you'd like to squeeze a little lime in there. Don't forget the little party papers, too. Party papers. You like the party papers. They just get in my way. <laughs> it adds to the festive moment. It adds to the festive moment. Now, that is a nice watermelon martini. <laughs> Which I will not be sipping because I have the rest of the show to do, and I want it to come from the purest part of me, the show. <laughs> Bill, would you like to try it? You would like to try it? I'll let you try it. This is our neighbor, Bill Farley. Yes, good. Watermelon martini, yep. Handmade by us. Okay, fantastic. Thank you, Bill. Good. Now, Art makes a mean martini, but he also did these amazing watermelon carvings that have uh, even been displayed at the White House, these uh, watermelon carvings. These are gorgeous. What in the world is this? This is your surprise. You want, I just wanted to have a very relaxing, <laughs> unstressful day. <laughs> just you. He wanted me to have an unstressful lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of martini? That is great. Well, you drink that, this with friends? Oh, you, you drink, drink this with friends? friends? Yeah. yeah, you drink it. <laughs> <laughs> that is great. You drink it with friends? 
It's real. It's real. I made it. Oh, yeah, that's real. I'm going <laughs> to save this. I'm going to save this for after the show. This is a good idea. Where do you get this thing? Walmart. At Walmart? At <laughs> Walmart has changed. <laughs> Coming up, a fresh root twist on the traditional margarita. We'll be right back. Okay, so July is a great month for peaches. It is. So I wanted Art to tell you how to make his festive peach margaritas, mama. <laughs> peach margaritas. Come on we, with we've it. We've got some great peaches. Okay. Very simple. It is peach a, just, just go and get frozen peaches out of the grocery store if you have fresh. But, if, you know, just but don't be... You know. we, uh, if you have fresh or you see a roadside stand with peaches or, you know, we have that place... That, exactly. Yeah, right Martin next to us. And then what we've added is a little ginger syrup. Ginger syrup. We just, we just steep ginger in simple syrup and a little peach nectar. Yes. Is that fabulous? Yes. And then we've got a little tequila. Yeah. A little Cointreau. Yeah. And then poof, there it is. So it's tequila, Cointreau. Right. Peach nectar, uh, crushed peaches. Right. And um, this is my favorite part. Okay. I have, this is my noodle thing. Okay. Rub your glass with a little lime. Turn that out so you, off so you don't have to talk over it. Rub, Rub your glass, glass with a little. Uh -huh. Look at this. And this fabulous. All this colored salt. See, Art is my chef, and he gets excited over. Things like this. <laughs> I'll come home from a long day and he'll say, Mrs. Winfrey, I just discovered the nicest sugars. It's so wonderful. Puff. Puff. It's nice. That's nice, Art, that I have to say. That's nice. <laughs> a little. After a long day at the office, there's nothing like a nice little sugar to rim. Good. I like a straw. There you are. And there you are. And that's a nice little. Mm hmm. I can taste the tequila, baby. <laughs> Am I going to make it through the show? I had a. Who should water. make it through the show? Audience, you get one without alcohol. Come on out. Oops. Pretty amazing. Pretty good. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Not good. Did she stop you? No, they didn't just stop you. Okay. Special thanks to Crate and Barrow for furnishings and for place settings. And thanks to Urban Gardener, they're great, for the garden furnishings. And Gethsemane Garden Center for the trees and flowers on our set today. Thank you, Katie Brown. You're welcome. Your rocks are special. <laughs> uh, Charlie Trotter, thank you so much. That sandwich will be making it. And Art Smith, always love to you, honey. Thank you. Uh, bye, everybody. Have a great summer. Here's to you in summer. Yeah.